Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, part six of topic five in our database class, I'm going to discuss some considerations for how we can model one to many binary relationships in our database designs. All right, with that in mind, let's move on to one to many binary relationships. These, of course, are by far the most common types of relationships that we encounter in the relational database world. And as I've said throughout our course, and I'll remind you here again, when we have a one to many binary relationship, we always place the foreign key at the many side of that relationship. That is whichever side of the relationship has many as the maximum cardinality, that table will receive the foreign key. And just building out our jargon a little bit. In this case, it's very common to refer to the one side of that relationship as the parent and the many side of that relationship as the child. Right? So if we have a database design that looks a little something like this, right? we got our little relationship here and the one side is the many as we see there, then in this case, this side is the child and this side over here is the parent. Okay. And hopefully it makes sense, right? Because it's, if you think about it biologically, like each parent can have many children, right? So this might be like a department, each department can have many employees. So for this particular relationship, the department would be the parent table and the employee table would be the child table. So the one side is the parent. In this case, this is the one side and the many side is the child. And of course we could, if we wanted to fill this out a little bit with additional details. So maybe this is one and only one here and one to many over there. Still the case that this is the one side and this is the many side. Remember we make that determination based on the maximum cardinality. So. The maximum cardinality here is one, maximum cardinality there is many, therefore this is the many side. All right. And here we see an example of this, in this case, a player in a team. So I don't know, maybe we have a softball team or a tennis team or something like that. And we can keep track of those relationships using a design similar to what we see illustrated here. All right. So in this case, it is one to many in this direction, meaning that each team and have zero to many players on the team. And each player belongs to one and only one team. Okay. And in this case, we know this is the many side of the relationship. So the foreign key goes here. And hopefully the reason why is evident, but just as a very brief reminder, let's take a look at this from a data perspective so that we can understand this. So in this case, we'll have our two tables, player, and just to keep things very simple, let's do it this way first. Put our key values over here. So let's say we have a player ID and a team ID. All right. And then we'll create a second table over here. This will be our team table. And in this case, we have a team ID and I'm leaving out all the extra attributes because they're not necessary for illustrating and understanding this point. Now, remember that conceptually what's going on here, we think of these as tables is that we have a one to many relationship in this direction, right? So this means that since this is the many side of the relationship, oops, sorry, that should have been an arrow. Since this is the many side of the relationship, then we place the foreign key here, right? So the primary key from the team table becomes the foreign key over there. Now, with all of this in mind, let's take a look at what this looks like from a data perspective. And hopefully that will give us some understanding on why we place always place the foreign key at the many side of the relationship in one of these one to many relationships. So let's say that we have a couple of teams 
say team number 10, team number 11, it's fine. And then we have some players, one, two, three, four, five. And these players will be on one of these two possible teams. So maybe team 10, team 11, team 10, team 10, team 11, right? So when we do things in this way, we can essentially grow our set of, of data relationships between teams and players infinitely. That is, we can have as many players and as many teams as we need with never having any empty spaces, right? If we look out here, there aren't any null values. Right, so I don't have any empty values here for the foreign key. I don't have any empty values over here. Since every player must belong to a team in this scenario, as I add more and more players. So maybe I, let's say I add a new team, there's a new team in my league, maybe team number 12. So I'll put them in there in green so we can see them. So there's team number 12. And uh, then if we want to add some people to team number 12, it's no big deal. Right. We just fill in the values, maybe players six and seven are on team number 12 and we never have any empty spaces. Okay. So that is why this design is great. Now let's consider for a moment, an alternate design where we try to place the foreign key at the one side of the relationship. And remember in this case, sorry, the team table here is the one side of the relationship because what we have is a little something that looks like this. This is the many side over here. And that means the team table in this design is the one side. So let's see what happens if we try to keep track of the relationships between teams and players by putting a foreign key over here in the team table. All right. Now to do this, I need to clear out some, all these data rid of the data and we'll see what happens if we try to take this approach and we'll discover pretty quickly that it's a giant disaster. All right. I need to recreate my player table. So we'll have a player ID, it's primary key. And let's say then that we put the player ID over here and we try to set this up as a foreign key scenario and we start filling in some data again just as we did previously. So I have some players and I have some teams. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And okay, so say team number 10, team number 11, team number 12, just like we did before. So how do we keep track of the connections then between players and teams in this model? Well, I've got my player ID over here as a foreign key that I can use to point back over here to the player table. However, you'll note that there's only a single slot available for players for each team, right? So with this kind of a design, I can only have one player per team. And I might say, okay, team number 10 has player number one on it. And team number 11 has player number three and the team number 12 has player number six. But the problem, if you remember, is that this is supposed to be a one-to-many relationship in the sense that teams can have many different players. So I obviously can't support that right now because with this design where I have player ID living over here. Oops, sorry, that should have been an arrow. When I have player ID living over here in the team table, I can only have one player per team. And the reason why, of course, is that team ID is a primary key. Okay, so I can't duplicate this. I could not, for example, do something like this in order to keep track of the fact that players one and two are both on team 10, right? As soon as I try to do this, the database will throw an error because I would have a duplicate value for the primary key. So this is not allowed, right? It would not allow me to enter this row. So I can't keep track of the relationships between teams and players in a one-to-many relationship using this kind of design. It simply does not work. So what are my alternatives then? 
Well, if I don't want to do this the optimal way, which is the way I showed you originally, then the only feasible thing that I could realistically do here would be to add more player ID columns. All right, so I might say something like, okay, maybe this is player ID one, All right? And right over here, so it's close by. And then we have to add an additional column, right? We have to start saying, okay, then I have maybe like a player ID two column and player ID three and player ID four, et cetera, depending on how many players I have on my team. All right. So I'm going to just relocate some of these things here. Sorry. Let's move some of these things. So I have a little more space available for further illustrations. All right. And probably going to be easier if I just wipe these out and redo it. And I'll add one more player column out here just for the sake of illustration. So player ID three, and then we can start filling in the data. So I've got team number 10, team number 11, and team number 12. And I can say something like, I don't know, players one and two are on team 10. And uh, maybe players three and five are on team 11. And maybe players four and six are on team number two. And all that is fine until I add a third player in there. And then maybe I say this player number seven is here on this team number 11. So with this kind of a design, I'm hoping you can start to intuitively see why this is a bad idea, right? You have these empty spaces in here. And I suddenly have a situation where what if I want to add a fourth player or a fifth player or a 23rd player to a team, right? If I have uh, like an American gridiron football, each team has more than 50 players on it. So with the kind of design that is illustrated here, I would need to have more than 50 player ID columns. Right, player ID one, player ID two, player ID three, player ID four, player ID five. And you can start to see how suddenly it's a gigantic mess. It's much, much, much more efficient to place the foreign key at the many end of the relationship rather than trying to place a set of foreign keys at the one end of the relationship. So this design here is much more complicated and has many more problems to it than if I had done it the other way. So just as a reminder, if we had done this the other way, our design would look like this. It's team ID over here. And then as we fill in the data, we can do this in whatever way we want. I, I can have an infinite number of players per team. I don't have any gaps. There's no null values, no empty cells in the design. I can create as many teams and as many players as I need and create the relationships between them. And I don't have this set, this giant set of additional player ID columns like we saw in the previous example there. So this is by far a superior solution. Much, much more efficient, right? Infinite number of teams, infinite number of players. I can keep track of all the relationships with this simple design. And that is a data perspective on why we say that the foreign key goes at the many end of the relationship. So here's the many end. We drop the foreign key over here, and we now have seen an example of why that is the case. It's much, much more efficient than trying to do it the other way. All right. So of course we have seen the sequel for this. So this should hopefully be a review. We just have to join these together. And we do them on matching values of primary key and foreign key. So in this case, team ID, we can join them that way using the where clause and inner join or the way that I prefer, which is to do it using the join clause in the from statement. Because with this way, you can do all kinds of joins, right? I can do a left outer join, a right outer join, a full outer join, or an inner join just by changing the type of join here. And with this method, I can only do an inner join, right? So we've seen this before. We should know how to do that by now. I won't spend any more time on it.